waiting on our balcony for the Royal Australian Air Force to do their fly pasts. It's either going to be one or two FA-18s. Whilst we're waiting, we can see three helicopters circling around East Point. of the one FA-18 which it didn't come that close but it was pretty close. We watched the live broadcast of the Darwin March on ABC Australia. Here's some highlights and I'll put a link in the description. Leading today's ANZAC parade is the Northern Territory Police. Also in recognition of their recent service in the Middle East, two Bushmaster armoured vehicles have been included at the front and you'll see at the rear of this year's parade also. Also leading the parade is the Whaler Horse, an essential part of the Australian Light Horse Regiments in World War I, of course. And they were popular and indeed bred because of their steady natures and easy gait. There's plenty of authentic uh, military uh, attire that Willing Noble Ravelli, the horse, is actually wearing. Of course, really Darwin is a defence town too, so uh, it is expected that we have a good show today. Jeanette Wilson, of course, leading the horse. Uh, she's a very well-known um, horse trainer and, and, and indeed um, passionate uh, supporter of the service every year. These are our so Bushmaster Pan Vs. What are they used for, Nick? Well, it's, uh, they're really useful in uh, providing armoured um, mobility. So really, it just moves you from A to B. You they use certainly look impressive. <laughs> yeah. And so we've got some of our veterans coming through now. Uh, this is the disabled veterans uh, from all conflicts uh, represented. So from World War II to the present day, uh, these servicemen uh, have either become uh, ill or invalided um, or are too elderly and can't march the distance. Um, and we've got Mrs Valma Van Hees, uh, gunner from 61st, 62nd Searchlight Battery. You were just saying before to me, Nick, very important to our own Darwin history, that yeah. particular unit. So searchlight batteries um, are used essentially to provide uh, a bit of illumination at night so that we can successfully defend against air raids and the like. Um, so thanks to her efforts, Darwin is essentially defended without a deliberate uh, invasion of the mainland in World War II. Which, really of course, was when we saw most of our attacks in that form, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, exactly. So we have the Australian, New Zealand and Union Jack. UK flags there. Now we've got the Darwin City Brass Band coming through. Musical director Jeff Coote. On the, the drum major is Ron Roberts. Current band was formed in 1981 and has 40 members, including their trainees. Always looking to recruit, so if you're keen to play an instrument, think about joining. That brass band was actually started in 1895 in Darwin, so that's a really impressive uh, organisation that's actually been around longer than um, the current iteration of the Australian Army, which is from 1901. And here we have the RSL coming up now. They're not uh, current serving personnel and aren't in uniform, but their medals are from World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Iraq and Afghanistan. Great, so this is the Raimi Association of the Northern Territory. Uh, their banner is blue, yellow and red uh, and has a rampart unicorn with lightning behind. The letters R, A, 
AMA stands for Royal Australian Electrical and Mechanical Engineers. So the Royal Australian Navy Clearance Association, of course, another key uh, unit. Yes. Uh, clearance divers, particularly very World impressive War II. Navy unit. Um, this is the RAF contingent. And there we can see uh, the Northern Territory Administrator, Honour Vicky O'Halloran, with the Mayor, Lord Mayor Con Conbat Scarless. As you can see, we have uh, three ARH Tiger helicopters. We're really lucky to have a flyby today. They're flying from Darwin Harbour over the march. Uh, they're from the 1st Aviation Regiment of the Australian Army, and they're based at uh, Robinson Barracks, uh, serving in the 1st Brigade. Such an impressive sight. I've seen these guys around town a lot in the last few days. It must be a training exercise on. It's just very, very impressive to see that fly over your car on the highway, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> Right, here we have the Australian Army contingent. This is, uh, of course, your particular uh, topic of knowledge, Nick. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so leading the Australian Army contingent is uh, the commanding officer of the 1st Combat Signal Regiment, also known as 1CSR, uh, Lieutenant, Colonel, Lieutenant Colonel Timothy Minion. Here we have the United States Marines contingent. Uh, the MRF-D is currently uh, about well, just over a thousand US uh, personnel in Darwin. Great, this is the band of the 1st Brigade. Um, the Australian Army Band was formed in 1988. It's one of the 11 Australian Army Band Corps units located in major cities around the country. Come the girl guides. Ah, <laughs> oh, this is also a <laughs> all the the artillery is so popular with the crowd. I think they they get a real buzz out of seeing this. Uh, all the you know, so heavy close machinery, up. exactly. Yeah. I believe the jets are about to pass over. Listen to that deafening roar. There's plenty of uh, healthy rivalry really? uh, between the Army yeah, and the Air Force, come. but as soon as these jets tear overhead, uh, we have nothing but respect. Do you think they win that rivalry? Uh, in this specific <laughs> in this instance, category. exactly in this moment, uh, the RAF's dominance is uh, pretty hard to come back against. I've actually uh, been in one of the simulators that they used to train and it is absolutely terrifying how real that is and, yeah. and how much you feel like you're actually in that aircraft. Plenty of buttons. Mm. That does look like the, the end of uh, this year's Anzac March. So let's take a moment to reflect on this day in 1915 when the first major military action fought by Australian and New Zealand forces during the First World War took place in Turkey. At this time, on Sunday, the 25th of April, 1915, Australian soldiers began to wade ashore on the Gallipoli Peninsula in Turkey. At home, weekend life continued, oblivious to the unfolding drama 12 and a half thousand kilometres away. On this day, we remember the sacrifices made by our servicemen and women at war in conflicts and on peacekeeping operations, and especially those volunteers who took part in the landings on Gallipoli. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. Thank you.
lest we forget. In these unprecedented times, we stand apart, but we remain together, lest we forget. joining the Northern Territory's coverage of Anzac Day and of course commemorations have been ongoing for the past 24 hours really. Hundreds gathered last night for Anzac Eve for a special acknowledgement of the Sydney city's monument of remembrance. A hundred years ago the Darwin Cenotaph was built and today for the first time the commemorations included an, an eternal flame and some very special guests. A blessing and a smoking ceremony on Darwin's esplanade as the city's long-awaited eternal flame is ceremonially lit on the eve of Anzac Day. For a hundred years we had the cenotaph, but no eternal flame. Every other city in Australia has got an eternal flame, burning always to remind people of the sacrifice that people made, gave their lives overseas in various places around the world and of course some of them here in Australia, in Darwin. Representing eternal life, commemorating fallen soldiers, it overlooks Darwin Harbour where in 1942 the Second World War reached Australian shores. There was over 200 and what, 30 odd lives lost just out on that harbour there. Unlike all other eternal flames across the country, this one here in Darwin is completely electronic, all because of how cyclone prone the city is. The official opening of the flame coincided with the centenary of the city's cenotaph, a celebration fit for the Governor General, a former commander of Darwin's own 1st Brigade. Course, Anzac Day commemorations coming to an end. We've seen the march just happen there on Nucky Street. <laughs> Thanks for watching everyone, lest we forget.